What is up internet? I'm the nice one and today I got another character modeling video for you. We're making a D&D &D warlock and finally finishing off our cast of main characters for my animated series. Like the other models, we're building the character in Maya and using Blender for the texture. So if you're ready to hurl some Eldritch Blasts, sit back, relax, and let me make the mistakes for you. What's up YouTube? Today we're adding a Typhling Warlock to the roster using AutoCAD Maya to build the mesh. We're using the box modeling approach so that we end up with a nice low poly mesh that we can texture paint later. As per the technique, start with a primitive box and what I like to do is add loop cuts along the four front faces of the mesh so that you divide the box into eight. Make sure you've activated symmetry on the X axis so that the edits you make on one side is carried over to the other. From there, I'll scale the middle loop to create a bit of a waist and extend down the bottom loop to elongate the body. Once I like the proportions, I'll begin rounding out the shape by sliding the left and right vertical edges in so that they create a 45 degree angle. Doing this will generate a nice curve between the edges once you actually convert to smooth mesh in the future. Once I have a nice cylindrical shape of the body, I'll move on to the legs by loop cutting an inset square within the original body and then extruding down to create the general shape of the leg. Make sure to add loop cuts along key joints of your mesh, such as the knee, ankle, the elbow, and the wrist because those are typical areas which are going to deform once you rig your character and adding a couple of loop cuts will make the bend a lot cleaner. I'll continue to add cuts along major areas of the leg and then extend it out to give it a bit of a muscular shape such as the calves and thighs. Once I'm happy with the leg, you can create the foot entirely by extruding out along the edge and creating a front face of the foot and then using the bridge function to fill in the gaps. Or you can model a simple foot from another polygon primitive like a square and then use the boolean combine function to slice and combine the two meshes together. Make sure to retopologize the vertices which are not connected so that you don't have any end gods. You can do this by using the target weld tool to snap combined nearby vertices. After the legs, I'll move on to the arms which is a pretty similar process of extruding out, loop cutting along the joints and then extruding out areas where I want to have mass. And then this time I'll use a new poly primitive to create the hands and then the boolean combine function to stitch it all together. Finally, I'll create the head using a box primitive and using the slide edge feature to round out the shape. This is where the convert to smooth mesh feature comes in really handy because you can achieve a really nice rounding of the face while working in the low poly format. To add hair to the face, I like to box model each individual strand from a single poly cube primitive that was elongated and then scaled down to a point on one end. In low poly, this looks really weird, but once you apply the smooth mesh preview, you get a nice anime hairstyle strand which you can layer to create that anime character look. Ironically, on this model, you can use the same hair strands and orient them upwards to create the signature Typhling horns. Just make sure to paint them red or whatever the skin color you're using so they don't look like an epic cow. And then boom, you have a body, head, and some hair. I'll create the clothing by modeling out the outer face of the piece first. I'll extrude a plane primitive that was just subdivided by one around the body to create a general shape. Make sure to switch between low poly and smooth mesh finish to see how the creasing's looking. But once I'm happy with the outer face of the clothing, I'll extrude thickness to give it some weight and substance, and bevel the edges which need to be sharp like armor pieces. I'll continue this approach for the pants, jacket, undershirt, chest plate, belt, and all the other accessories. Once everything's modeled and placed in their proper position, I'll combine the entire mesh so that it's a single piece and take it into Blender for some unwrapping and texture painting. And there you have it my basic way of creating a Typhling Warlock for d and You guys have all been asking for more step-by-step -step tutorials, so you can expect a multi-part series that is a step-by-step -step guide on how to create a simple character like this next. Might be done over a couple of videos so that you learn how to do all stages as opposed to being all in one. And I'll probably touch on stuff like rigging, unwrapping, texture painting, and maybe even a little bit of animation in Blender. But until then guys, I'll let the time lapse play me out. And as always, I hope you liked the video. I'll talk to you later. Have a nice night.